What does it take to launch a rebel business school? How do you create this thing? Well, it's launching in Colombia, and I'm here with the team from Rebel Business School Colombia. The extraordinary belongs to those that create it. Rebelling against business plans and debt, rebelling against what society expects of us to build cool businesses, make money, have fun, and do good. Let's create something extraordinary together. Welcome to the Rebel Entrepreneur. So here we are. I'm in Bogota. I'm in Colombia. I'm with Danny, Alfredo, and Fabi. And we're here building the Rebel Business School in Colombia. But how did we end up here? Okay, well, let's get this started. Hello, everyone. My name is Fabian Cardoso. Saludos desde Colombia. And we are very glad to be joining Alan in this podcast. Well, the question, how does this begin and where are we going? I met Alan a couple of years ago while studying in my MBA here in the UK. I was immediately connected to what he was explaining to us. At that moment, he was kind of telling us how to do a proper elevator pitch. He told us about his work with uh, Downing Street. He told us about his work with, at that time, Pop-Up Business School. And uh, maybe in that moment, I didn't figure it out, uh, but it, it struck me and it remained with my mind. After a couple of years, it came back to me. One of my friends worked with uh, Anand uh, doing his business project with Pop-Up Business School at the time and the way they had expanded into other countries. So that is when it clicked. I said, if they're doing all of this cool stuff and they're helping people start businesses without debt in Morocco, if they're helping people in France, Colombia is the perfect ground to do this. There is so much creativity back home. There is so many wonderful people back there that need this and that can benefit so much that it just makes sense. So that's when, when we started talking and thinking about, you know, how can we actually take it? I don't live in Colombia currently. I am, of course, Colombian. But what kind of, of wonderful team do we need to actually make this a reality? Of course, the, the main thing is people that can speak the language and that know Colombia and that have been working with entrepreneurs there. Sí, and no hablo español. Hablas bien. <laughs> he, he actually <laughs> speaks it quite quite well. <laughs> So, so that's when, when Alfredo and, and Danny came in because, of course, they are uh, quite experienced in the, in the country. So the idea was to take the methodology that we created in the UK that's been spreading in other countries and bring it to Colombia. Like, Alfredo, what got you excited about this? How did it start? Did Fabi just randomly ring you and say, we need to bring this weird English thing to Colombia? How did it happen? It actually happened in a very, very curious and fortunate way, I would say, because Fabi is a good friend of mine. We have known each other since university. And Fabi is a very close friend of Danny, which is the other partner here. And we decided, we, we didn't decide anything. We just, Danny and I just hang around and we had in our idea that we wanted to do a business together and just let's start something. I have my nine, nine to five job, but I want to also become an entrepreneur in some kind of way. And I knew that I wanted to build something with Danny, but we didn't know exactly what we were building. So we started like literally brainstorming ideas, sectors of the economy that would be interesting to tackle. And we decided on learning and on education because Danny will tell a little bit more about that, but he has a lot of knowledge on education. And we felt that his knowledge might be a game changer for, for something around education. And eventually we just had that. And that's when Danny talked to Fabi and all the pieces just started matching. Planets aligned. <laughs> the planets aligned. I love it. So you just had a random phone call? I did. I did. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Daniel. Fabi called me from the UK and told me about these cool people who are doing entrepreneurship in a really different and like special way. 
And I was like, okay, cool, tell me more about it. And I've told you, Alan, before, like at the first point, I was a little bit skeptical, like, okay, this is another entrepreneurship program from abroad. That's what everyone thinks. It's just another entrepreneurship program. It's just the same. Exactly. And we have so many programs here in Colombia from many governmental and private and university institutions. And I work a lot of years as an entrepreneurship teacher and having my own projects and my own startups. And yeah, what, what clicked at the first part was the, the differential part, was uh, the, the fact that you were doing things differently, but in a genuine way. And also the fact that you were interested. I think that was really cool. I mean, you were interested about Colombia, about going to a really, really different culture and market. And I think that was what kickstarted the conversation. I was excited about coming here. I wanted to explore the place, see the place. It's kind of famous, Colombia. And you are here now. I am here in Colombia. We're all sat here in Bogota in a co-working space recording this. So it's very cool that these random things happen. One of the things I was originally worried about, the first time we ever truly ran an international course that was so different was in Namibia in Africa. And I remember going to the capital city, Windhoek. We were going to be running a course there, and I was nervous. Like, will this methodology work? Is it going to translate to Africa? And when I was walking around the capital city, I saw a large wall with posters offering support writing your business plan and offering loans to start your business. And in that moment, I relaxed, going, ah, this is universal, People think it takes money to make money. Like, it's the same in Africa. It's the same. We run courses in France and Morocco. What's your opinion of that in Colombia? Is it the same? People think it takes money to make money and you need money to get ahead and starting a business is done in this traditional way. Like, what's it actually like here? Well, here, it's interesting because in Colombia, and it's maybe a phenomenon from the whole region. We have a lot of entrepreneurship, but it's not entrepreneurship from people that want to start their business because it's their life decision. But it's because that's what they could only do at some certain point. Yeah, You have to make money to feed yourself. Exactly. And that's a huge part of the pie uh, of entrepreneurship. And the other one, absolutely. I mean, how we were raised and how we were educated even the, um, the government programs and the Bogota Chamber of Commerce programs, they promote a lot that obviously you build a business plan that you have to present either to banks, to uh, maybe uh, investors, whatever. But I mean, they always teach you that way. So to that extent, it's, it's universal. I mean, to those entrepreneurs that are asked to write a business plan, it is. Which actually, if you're talking about street entrepreneurs... In a way, that's the purest form of entrepreneurship because you make something, <laughs> you cook something, and you sell it. That's the purest form of entrepreneurship on the streets. Absolutely. And it, it's, it's a, an interesting discussion. I also, I mean, as I told you, I, I've been a teacher for many years. And it's like, I mean, I find it cool. The academia is teaching entrepreneurship. But at some point, all, I, I always remember my grandfather. He was a very successful entrepreneur. He owned hotels and everything. And I'm sure, first, he absolutely never got a, a business education. And he absolutely never uh, did a business plan. And he had a lot of success. And why if those people at that time could do it? Why, I mean, our time is changing so much that we need a plan to do the business? Or at the end, it's like, I mean, that original like impulse uh, was enough. That's something cool to, to think. Yes, I would say that, that it's the, the rebel approach is amazing because it just gets you moving. It's doing something for the business to get started. And that's really hard here in Colombia, I would say, because you see the horizon and you see so many challenges. You see so many uncertainties. You see like, okay, I need to prepare for this and that, whatever. And once you thought about everything you need to do, you just spend a day and it, it just didn't happen. So what I do like about Revel is not... The theory behind it works so well because it gets people moving really fast 
and it gets that that movement going and flowing and it makes things happen and i think that part of also why we are seated here is because of some of that spirit like and, and that's something that i really found amazing of you guys that you were yeah let's do it let's start and see how to make it and the conversation was was simple Let's make things happen, and they're happening, which is amazing. Well, it's the same principles we live by as we teach. If we can sell it, we have a business. If we can't sell Rebel Business School yeah. in Colombia, yeah. we don't have a business. It's the same principles. You made a very interesting point there about thinking about all the stuff you have to do. And we had an argument with a, an entrepreneurial team in the UK. They're the traditional government-funded ones. I won't say who they are. They're evil. Anyway, this particular advisor said his strategy was to tell upcoming entrepreneurs everything that could go wrong. Oh, no. Because he wanted to prepare them in case it did go wrong. That's an infinite list. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it never it's ends. just like, I mean, world could end because of Waha. I don't know. Well, who would have predicted COVID yeah, last year? Who would have predicted COVID? And you can imagine if that happens in the in the UK, you can imagine how longer that list can be to most people here in Colombia because Alfredo is saying something very interesting. You know, the three of us Colombians sitting right here right now, we are extremely privileged people in our country. I mean, the mere fact that we are talking in English, in relatively fluent English, you know, we are a very small minority compared to, to this. And to us, it is already a, a big deal to start a business, to think of all the things that can, can go wrong. So the people that we are trying to help here are infinitely in a much worse position. We started telling them a list of, of things that could go wrong. If they can go wrong for us, for them, it's it's so much worse. It's so much more difficult and it can definitely put you off. I think that that is a, that is a very good point. Simon, my business partner, likes to point out when we talk about businesses and starting businesses, like I am a male. I have a loving family. I come from a background that like helped me in some ways and I have a lot of privilege as well and the traditional way to start a business put me off yeah so what does it do to everyone else and I think there are so many people in the world who will tell you everything that could go wrong but there's very few people that will help you see what could go right and they don't look at you and go if you try and sell this you might get a sale you might make some money You might build a business. That's a possibility. Why don't you try it? Whereas everyone else will tell you what all the problems are and why you can't do it first. And I think the world needs a few more people running around going, this might work. It could be possible. Shall we try? Yeah, and move from that inertia to a momentum that just starts you and just... It's going to be hard at the beginning. I mean... Just trying to sell something gets you out of your comfort zone. <laughs> Big time. It's just hard to tell somebody, give me money for something. Even if you have a good product, if you believe in it, whatever, it's hard. But once you do it, you get the feeling that something might go well and you just start. And there are very simple rules and principles that you could actually use and execute to keep the, the momentum and just let things build up on that movement, on that, yeah, on the pace that you put to, to any business, any business idea, any, I would say, life in general, in a sense that if you put the right energy focused on like the right direction, to call it in some way, you get the movement and that's it. And it's all about helping people start. And yep. talking about that, you ran the first course in Colombia just before Christmas. Who, who sponsored the event? Who was the partner for the event? The partner was the Secretaria de Desarrollo Económico. That's the major office for economic development. And, well, that's one of their most important objectives to promote uh, entrepreneurship, to promote um, that business start in, in the Bogota region. And they were eager because of the pandemic. They were eager to do 
a program and it was the end of the year. So they, I mean, it was not like a perfect match to work with them. And we did the first one in November at the, at the end of November. And it was really an amazing experience. How many people came along? It came around 20 persons. Around 20 people, which is in person for your first event in person. In person, as well. yeah. Under yeah. COVID restrictions, it was a, a very good turnout because, I mean, with all the, the measures that are in place to prevent, you know, close contact and distancing and all of that, it was a, a major achievement. I, I wasn't here at that time to, to see it live. But it was amazing to see the, the guys uh, make it happen under all those circumstances. Yeah. It was frightening, like, because it was also on a very short not notice. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> let's do it in three weeks. <laughs> but I, mean, I, I think we did it the, the real way because we say, okay, let's do it without even knowing what we were going to do. <laughs> and, and I want to add up to Danny because I know that Danny. Okay, so we worked as a team, whatever, but Danny was the face that was actually going to deliver the course. And I saw how Danny just really understood the rebel principles and just ran with them. And and I feel, and I would ask you, Danny, that you, you tell us more about it. But at the beginning, you, you were like, okay, I don't know how to do it. The presentation is hard. Okay, how could I translate an English joke into a Colombian situation and British make it... humor does not translate. <laughs> it doesn't. And, <laughs> and it's harder than because you guys have a very interesting kind of humor in the rebel kind of presentations. And we wanted to be true to that and to keep it as, as part of the closeness you get to with the people. So we were having like a very challenging time. I would not challenging, very entertaining kind of of thinking around how to how to make it so accessible to the people as you guys do in the UK. But Danny, once we were starting on that, Danny started to learn more of the principles, and I feel that. And I wanted to ask you about that experience on on how did you. There was a change in you, so... Well, you taught entrepreneurship before. Like you, It's not like you haven't taught entrepreneurship. Exactly. And then you've got this random PowerPoint and British man <laughs> saying, here's a methodology. It's interesting, isn't it? What was that like? I think part of the success you have with Rebel Business School and UK and other countries is what you are able to transmit. Definitely, it's not something that is written or it's on a PowerPoint. It's what you build from the whole experience. And that was the biggest challenge like to replicate here. How can we uh, like trans transmit that energy that you that means you do even when we talk? How can we do it here locally in Colombia? And yeah, I mean, that was the difficult part. I remember when I was uh, delivering the program, like uh, it was at the end of the first day that I wasn't exactly convinced. And I remember texting you and you saying like, don't worry, it will come together towards the end. And I was okay, <laughs> let's trust that. And it did. I mean, when you go through the whole program, it comes together at the end. And realizing that for the first time was, I think, satisfying. But I, it's also, it was felt by the people attending there. And I would add something that, that Dan is very methodical and he know, knows a lot on the concepts, the ideas, how to do the presentation. And he really thinks on how to engage people on it. So the fact that he, uh, I, I attended the event and I was, I was helping on the backstage and I saw it happen. And the fact that he really did the click of tying it up together And seeing that it's not just the diet, it's not just like the way you you talk, it's it's everything around Rebel that makes it work. Um, what's revealing to him and for sure to me, because I it was the first Rebel event that, that I saw live and that I helped deliver. And it was very satisfying to see people actually click at the end of the course. We were talking to very different people that... That at the, the beginning, they were shy. They were not communicating really well. And we ended up the course by just 
having like, okay, I want to do something. I want to move forward. Uh, I'm good at for. Uh, I remember this musician guy that wanted to sell classes, and he was like, okay, I'm going to sell my music classes like tomorrow. And I was like, that's a change. That's literally something happened to that guy, and things move forward. He was waiting till tomorrow. No. <laughs> <laughs> He was. Yeah, I mean, he he was actually okay. To your point, to your point, part of the idea on the course was to actually just give a quote to a client, and he did that, and he got a very positive answer. So the quote, I think that before the course, he wasn't harnessing his will just to go out and give a quote. And in the week of the course, he was just giving out quotes, and I think one of those clicked and worked. So I do remember that guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, and to me, Daniel is the Colombian Alan, and this is high praise for both of you. That's guys. scary. <laughs> There's it, two of us now. Yeah. I agree with Paul. It is, it is, it is <laughs> high praise. I mean, of course, not in every sense, but uh, <laughs> when I. We both wear glasses. We're both tall and attractive. Yep. When I first then like thought, how would a Colombian rebel school event look like? I said, okay, if there is somebody that can do it with the similar or or same energy as Alan, it is um, you know Daniel, and and I think that that it it comes with a big that is a big part of of both rebel business school successes. Well, I think part of it is you have to infect, yes. inspire, give the energy to the other people, the belief of possibility. And they almost need to feel it within you. So if you're the one running the course, you have to be inspired, you have to believe it's possible, and then your energy infects everyone else around you. And it all starts from you. And I think it's really fascinating to everyone listening to this podcast. Your energy infects the people around you. If you're excited about your business, that's the first step towards a sale. Because if you're excited, someone else will get excited. And that's your first step towards a sale. And if I could say one thing to everyone listening, it is quadruple your enthusiasm. Like if you can find that enthusiastic, I'm just excited to do this energy, it will transmit to everyone around you. Yeah. Absolutely, and and I want to thank uh, like from the team. I want to. I, I think we are all really thankful that you are here because that's what actually you are doing. You are transmitting. You are giving us that energy that I mean we only knew uh, from Zoom calls, and it was. I mean those were great, but having you here, it's is, a bit different, isn't it? <laughs> absolutely, a bit different. I, I didn't figure you were. I mean when we pick you up at the airport. Uh, we thought of, you were a little bit different, but um, and you, I think you had the same thought about me. You're a lot taller than you look on Zoom, Dan. <laughs> was not expecting that. And you are a, a lot taller than you look on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but having you here is it, it's been great. I mean, for us, it's it's also been revealing. It's been inspiring, and just the energy you are putting into this. And not only with us, but also with the meetings and clients we have met. That's been great. So not everything is perfect all of the time. What's been the lows? What have been the challenges? Because you've been trying to launch this for a while now and grow it. What's been the pain points? What's affected you? I mean, I think that, that when you talked at the very beginning about the traditional way of teaching entrepreneurship that happened not only in Namibia but in the UK I think that has been one of the of the challenges we have seen because of course some of the people that we have talked to they are accustomed to doing entrepreneurship in the you know quote unquote traditional way so they have been a little bit reluctant to understand and listen to to what we are bringing to the table we have talked with a couple of local universities that you know they have been in their mind, teaching entrepreneurship for, for a long time. And of course, they do it very well. And there is no doubt about it. But uh, this different approach, it might not click with them immediately. So I think that, that we have got a lot of like 
we were expecting it to happen, but uh, a lot of no's, a lot of yes maybes, a lot of strong maybes that are quite similar to a big no. Um, <laughs> so it, 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 that has been, uh, I mean, it's part of the experience. And I would say that is one of the of the of the things that I can highlight. But mm -hmm. there have been many. <laughs> yeah, and I think from a good perspective, entrepreneurship right now is really trendy in Colombia. When I started being an entrepreneur some years ago, I mean, it was, it was a really lonely uh, business. Uh, well, Fabian, my other friends in school, many started working at companies. I was like the, the how do you say it in English? Like the, the odd one out. Uh, that one. I was like that. But right now it's trendy. But because also uh, as, as trendy as it is, there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of hype around it. There's a lot of Colombian universities and also uh, companies and universities from abroad promoting entrepreneurship. And in an ocean where there's so much stuff, obviously it's a little different to stand out. And I think we have struggled a little bit like on differentiating us on really showing the, the people we talk to that we are genuinely different and having the um, all the arguments and and really convincing them about that that's been difficult but we are learning and we are i mean we have advanced from the first meetings we had with potential clients to what we are doing this last uh, weeks i think there's a a very good improvement and we are getting there slowly but with more, more effectively <laughs> Well, I think it's really interesting because we had the same problems in the UK. We had the same problems elsewhere. In the UK, I spent a lot of time talking to universities, traditional advisors. And basically what I worked out was I was selling to people who thought they did what we were suggesting better than we did. And then I come along and go, no, 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 you're doing it all wrong. Like, look, universities, you'll put more people off than you'll help start. And they don't like that. And I really struggled with it. A few of them we found that you'd find the person who goes, no, I've been running this course and you're right. Like this puts people off. And my business partner, Simon, was one of those people. Like he worked for the traditional support agency that I complained about and said they were useless. And when we had the meeting, he was like, yeah, it doesn't really help your average person, does it? And there's a different way to do it. And when we went, we tried a long time in Florida And the lady in Florida that was launching it, she was lovely. She had huge energy, but she was selling to people who already did what we did. And it's just a painful process when you're doing that. And it's almost as if you need to find the person with an organization that you can connect with, that understands your ideas, that has had the problem you're trying to fix. And the way that Rebel Business School got to France was this exact thing. It's actually through the podcast. The head of entrepreneurship for HEC Paris, they'd been running a course in the suburbs of Paris, helping black Afro-Caribbean women to launch businesses, and their content was struggling to connect. They were running like high-level MBA business in the suburbs of Paris, and it wasn't working. And he listened to me on a podcast going, you don't need business plans, you don't need loans, try it this way, start for free. And... It clicked because he had the problem. He listened to me and it was the solution and we found the right person. But that's tough to find those person. And I think for everyone listening to this, like this is a story of getting rejected. I went through years of that <laughs> to try and get to where I wanted to. And I think we're going through it here, but we're starting to find a few of the people who actually understand. Rebels. The rebels, the rebels within the other businesses. Yes. So where do you want to go with this? Where are you heading? You're like, we've struck a deal. You are now the rebels of Colombia. Where do you want to go with this? What are you trying to achieve? We are, we are, we are on this journey that we are first, and that I think that's the most important thing. We are believing, and we are convinced, and we are inspired, and also happy to work on this. That's, I think, the, the first part. This is not something that we achieved in uh, in one week or in one month. It's something that we have uh, been doing for the last months, and it's part of that. And when when we are already believing in this, the next step, obviously, we want because we believe in this. We want to take it to new places, to new industries. Definitely, we also like, and I think I talk for the whole team 
that of making a positive impact in Colombia on the people that really need it. That's something that inspires us, but also doing it with a project that we own. That's also of big value. That's something that I know, for example, uh, Fabian, who has worked uh, um, most of his life in the corporate businesses, that he also is very eager and excited about owning his own project and his own company. And that's something that excites us. And I think that's also, it moves us a lot, no? Yeah, I mean, for me, um, since, I mean, I'm, I'm still living in the UK, but when I first thought of the potential that this could have, uh, the possibility of helping people in, in my country and doing some good back home to me, that is so, so exciting. I mean, we have talked with some people that are interested in bringing the program. Those are amongst uh, the possibilities to bring the program to uh, former combatants in conflict zones. You know, uh, of course, to talk a little bit about the, the history of, of, of Colombia, uh, we would have to do a different podcast altogether. We might, hopefully, in the future. But this is a country that is, it has, like many in the region, a lot of problems. And the, the recent ended war has left uh, a lot of, of issues in um, the rural parts of the country. We are all from the capital city, but there are a lot of things happening going on that we don't know about. So when we talk with these people and they open the possibility of talking with these former combat combatants, uh, former victims of the conflict that are trying to come back to, to civil life and, and, and reintegrate to, to society in a way that for many years they were considerably separate from, that to me is just an, an amazing possibility. It, it brightens my, my eyes. I would definitely be very happy if a project like this would come to fruition. And from a values perspective, not, not only from a personal standpoint, but I think that, that as Daniel was saying a moment ago, from a company standpoint, that is something that, that makes my gears turn, you know, it definitely seems as, as something that would energize me in the future and would energize a lot of people. And that is just, you know, a, an incredible possibility. And, and, and I mean, I mean, I can see a very, very big horizon if, if something like this could happen. We could help a lot of people. So I think Danny and Fabi have said almost everything that I feel around what I see in Rebel in Colombia. But from a company point of view, as Fabi said and as Danny said, making a change is amazing. Just seeing how a tool might create a knowledge might create a better future for others. It's something that I believe fully in and that would make my days uh, more entertaining and my professional life more successful. I feel that the world is going to move towards measuring impact in such a way that, that it's going to change in the future. So making the life of others easier is going to be rewarded in a way that I don't know how it's going to be yet, but I feel that personally there's a reward, a personal reward there that eventually companies might understand that that's not just for the personal like satisfaction or feeling of giving back to society, but companies are realizing that giving back to society is, is the whole point. I would say that personally, I love to, first of all, work with, with my partners. I feel like as a personal project, something is very good once you have partners that you click with and just going to a meeting and saying, okay, here's Alan, here's Fabi, here's Danny, and just spending time in that kind of way makes sense. Once you add something up that you are generating something positive around it, makes more sense. And if you make a business out of it and you get money out of it that's just a perfect match for for whatever you're doing so it's it just makes sense it sounds like the perfect business yeah one of my favorite expressions is you can have anything you want in life if you help enough other people get what they want in life and it's really fascinating when you look at the true purpose of a business 
is to make other people's worlds better. Yeah. And everything we buy, I don't care what it is, pizza, that makes my world better. The camera I own, the phone I own, the clothes, it makes my life better. And that's the true purpose of business, is helping other people have better lives, and then you charge for it. Because you've got to make a profit. You need yeah, to be able yeah, to yeah, yeah. pay for your house. I have to be able to buy pizza. It's very important to me. Um, but if we can do that, we get wealthy. Other people get wealthy. Life gets better for all of us. And I think that's one of the foundational things. So really interested to know, are there any differences? Like what didn't translate from the course in England, UK, to Colombia, what does not translate other than my humor, obviously? <laughs> well, um, when we are delivering the, the program here, there are some things that I think are really cultural or what we were trying to transmit and that I definitely needed, I mean, we couldn't include it. For example, when we talk about, uh, when we are delivering the, the first day and we talk about how to start a business for free and there are five ways of doing it, we had to remove one, which was which one, <laughs> which was uh, asking people to lend you stuff, and not precisely not not lend you stuff, but uh, what can you sell to get like an initial investment? Oh, okay, there's a way of selling the stuff in your house. Exactly. Yes. So you have spare DVDs on the shelf. You have spare books. You have things lying around. You sell them, raise some money, and then spend yeah. that rather than go into debt. Yeah, that one, I mean, we struggle a little bit with that one. Maybe we are not, like, accustomed to, like, sell our stuff to get, uh, like, money. I mean, we really struggle with that one. Maybe it's a cultural thing. Maybe maybe we can include it in a in another program, but with a different approach. So what do you do with your old stuff? You must have stuff in your house. What do you do with <laughs> we it? keep it there. <laughs> keep <laughs> it. <laughs> keep <laughs> it. The, the problem, and I, and I really... <laughs> I mean, this is something that I, I, I do understand, Danny, but I have a different kind of view on it. I feel that, that although we have a lot of stuff lying around, there's no culture of, of you going to sell your used stuff. Okay, I know friends that do it, but they are, it's, not, it's not easy for you to make a sale of something old here. So it's not like America has Craigslist, the UK has Facebook Marketplace or Gumtree. We have all these sites that you can put your used things on and sell them, and you can here, do that instantly. Here you have, like, Facebook uh, commerce, and you can just yeah, sell like, stuff. Like fan pages. Like, no, through Facebook you could sell okay. stuff here, and there are Mercado Libre and whatever, but culturally it's really hard to make... That will be, uh, I would say, a whole day of lesson on selling that stuff. I, and it's just not worth it. It's not worth it. I think people will sell old stuff if they are buying new stuff. And that's something that I've done. And I've seen a lot in, uh, I mean, in Mercado Libre is the biggest e-commerce in Latin America. And they sell stuff. And sometimes people say, would you accept as a payment this uh, used thing? And that's something really common. But apart from that, like, I mean, I don't see it that much as to start a business. Wow. Why not? I mean, we could explore it for next time. Isn't that interesting? I never would have expected that to be the thing that didn't translate. Because I find it fascinating because when Katie and I went nomadic, we sold everything in our house because we only travel with two bags. So I sold my car through Facebook. I sold my speakers, my old television, my board games, my old DVDs, like everything. I think we took about four or five grand four or five thousand pounds through just selling the random stuff in our house and it's interesting people say they don't have money to start a business and yet they have a load of stuff they never use and it's about liquidating that and using the cash for something positive but it's interesting i never knew that was there anything else that didn't translate because i find this fascinating i hope you do too listening I feel like the general philosophy translates perfectly. Some jokes. We kept some Star Wars jokes because we <laughs> like Star Wars. And that might not translate, but we still kept the jokes. 
<laughs> but in general terms, I feel like the philosophy translates perfectly. And although we did the not include that on the on the um, first course, the the sailing stuff, I might see how that might translate in another kind of way. Just selling stuff, not through. Uh, yeah, it's more of a of an idea that we might add to the next uh, event that we do. But in general terms, I feel like the philosophy does translate. Apart from the jokes, Star Wars, <laughs> that's it. So I'd love to know, Fabi, you've actually been to a course in the UK yes. and experienced it. Alfredo, you experienced one here. Yeah. Danny, you've now run one. And I've watched all the videos. <laughs> and you've watched all the videos. At least for round times. Yeah. <laughs> Plus... Every day before you ran the course, it felt like we were doing a Zoom call, going through the course again and again. It's quite the experience. If there was one thing from those courses that you would want everyone around the world to hear, like what's the one message you think, like this is the thing that I think the world needs to know that we need to share? You can do it, get started. It's just simple, like you have something to start a business. You can do it. It's possible. You can do it very with the rebel methodology. You could do it. And that's power in your hands that you need to get moving. I love two things. I love when, when you say that the number one secret in business is to go there, find one person and sell something to that person, because it's really that simple and realizing that it's mind blowing. And the second one that I actually also love a lot is that a lot of the barriers that people or obstacles that people put on themselves, like uh, 98% of the time have an example, or we as the overall business school have an example to show them that it's possible, even if you think of that obstacle. So that's great. Yeah, it's fascinating, isn't it? So many obstacles people see that keeps them trapped where they are. But they're self-imposed. Yes. And helping people see there is a way round, there is a way over the obstacle, there is a way under the obstacle, mm -hmm. uh, there's a way to go through it if you're <laughs> to smash Just it. Just don't care. Yeah. <laughs> there's so many ways, so many ways. Yeah, yeah that, that, I mean, I think that, that connected with that, that the confidence and, and the realization that everyone, absolutely everyone can do it. That to me is uh, definitely the most valuable aspect because, uh, you know, we've seen uh, people in, the, in Morocco that can do it. We've seen people in, as you were saying a, a moment ago, Alan in the Parisian suburbs, uh, black African-American or, or, or Caribbean-American women, they can do it in Colombia. We have such diversity and we have such a different background. And everyone can really do it. I mean, if, if, if we try it, if we do what, what Daniel uh, highlights of sell something to someone somewhere, you know, that realization allows you to understand that, that the barriers that have been imposed by economic differences, by ethnic differences, by uh, other societal differences, those can be overcome and you have to, you can do it. You can have the confidence to, to overcome. So I think that, that all of what you guys have said really is the big message to, to put out there and, and hopefully to the Colombian listeners, uh, you know, especially. I feel like we need to do a podcast episode in Spanish for the Colombian listeners. Yes. Let's do that. Sería una gran idea. <laughs> Necesito practicar más antes. <laughs> we can do it. We can do it. <laughs> we can definitely do it. So if there are Spanish speakers, people in South America who want to find more about what you're doing, how do they find the Rebel Columbia team? Well, they can find us at our website. It's www.crescenta.co or at our emails. That's daniel at crescenta.co crescenta is c-r-e-c-e-n-t-a i love that so i guess the message to everyone listening is it doesn't matter where you are in the world it doesn't matter who you are what your background is sell something that's the start of entrepreneurship come up with an idea or don't even come up with an idea. Go and find someone and ask them what they want. <laughs> ask them what their problems are. Ask them how you can make their life better and then sell them that. 
sales is kind of this universal thing where it doesn't really matter where you are, whether you're on a street corner, whether you're in the UK, America, it doesn't matter where you are, sell something. Because if you sell something, you have a business. You're making a profit. You're making progress. Your customer will hopefully be happy. If they're not, change it quick and do it again. You will be happy because you've made a progress. And everything changes through that start in sales. True. Mm -hmm. That's true. So for anyone else around the world who is inspired to bring Rebel Business School to their country, what would you all say to them? Do it. Go for it. it. Let yourself be infected by the rebel ideology and philosophy. It's great. We have done it as a team. Sometimes we have it as a motto, like, let's do this the rebel way. And we just go for it and it's cool. It works. I love that. And on that note, go out there, be a little bit rebellious and sell something. Thank you for listening to the latest episode of the Rebel Entrepreneur Podcast. There's two things I wanted to add right at the end. The first is Patrick, the podcast manager, and I are planning the last episode of season two, and we would love to have your voice notes, messages, feedback, what worked, what didn't, ideas, abuse, love, anything to comment on for the last episode. Patrick has opened a WhatsApp channel for The Rebel Entrepreneur, which if you go to alandonagan.com forward slash podcast, you will find a link to it. And you can leave us a voice note and then like, hopefully we'll use it in the last episode and reply. And genuinely, I would love to hear what you have to say. I will listen to every single message that you send through there. Please leave a voice message if you want it to be on the show. That would be really appreciated. And the second thing, season three is coming up. It's now November. Season three is coming up at the beginning of January. And my mind has just thought maybe it's time to get a new jingle. You can kind of hear the sadness in my energy. I've done many versions and had many comments about them. I don't think I've found the right one yet. Uh, if you are a listener to the show and you're good with music, maybe creating a new version for the beginning of the show, I really could do with some help. Uh, so if you'd like to help, maybe we can promote your business or we can come to some kind of idea between us. But I really could do with some hope getting a jingle that actually represents the show and the energy we have here. Because lots of people tell me it doesn't quite fit. So if you're up for that, use the WhatsApp, send me a message. I would love to hear from you. Go to alandonagan.com forward slash podcast, and you'll find a link to the WhatsApp. Leave me a message. I would love to hear your voice and to say hi. Thank you for listening to The Rebel Entrepreneur and being part of the gang. I really appreciate it. Now. Go out there and have fun building your business. You can have any life you want to. Choose to build something cool. Choose to take action. Choose to work to make your dreams become reality. Stand out. Be different. Be yourself. Be a rebel entrepreneur.